Hey guys, it's Con B, and I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that in the last day there's been an update to the Maker Pen menu. I know this is a, very confusing to a lot of people, especially where to find things because you get used to using a menu in a certain way and then everything gets moved around, but I really enjoy the new functionality of the menu. I'll go over some of the advantages and where to find some things, so let's go switch over to my point of view. All right, so I'm gonna take out my Maker Pen and you'll see, first of all, that there's five different tabs. You have configuration, palette, tools, logging, and this room. If I go to my palette, that's where you're going to find all of your shapes. Now, one of the advantages of the new menu is if you hold down the trigger, on the tab that you you're using you could actually drag it out and you could adjust the size which is helpful because you don't have to keep going back and forth to your maker pen uh, especially when you're using tubing it comes in handy so for starters i'm going to do use the cube as an example and now that i have my shapes up here i am on my tools tab and I'm actually going to pull that out as well. And your snapping features are the same on the top as it was before on your maker pen. Your world space is basically do you want the shapes to show in that x y z axis or do you want it just to be off of where your maker pen is facing? Um, do you want to show your gadgets. This is very similar to the old menu. But then you'll notice over here on the left side that there's a lot of different options and the menu just, it, it feels very different. So your create will create your shape. Selection, if you want to select your shape. You also have your drag select size and your snapping settings. One thing I did notice is that the position snap, which is how big you want your grid to be, your snapping grid. I can't even go that high right now. If I go back to create, you'll see that the larger your position snap is, the larger your initial shape is going to be because it's going to a larger grid size. Then you have rotation snap, which is when you rotate the object, how many degrees is it going to turn? If you want to show the grid, if you want to snap to center, a lot of these are very similar. Now, if I go over to transform and I click on my cube you'll see that this is a tool that combines the move rotate and scale onto one one tool so if I click on this red shape it's going to spin it in on the axis of the red the red axis if I do the blue the blue and then if I do the green the green you could also scale and move. So if you are making a lot of edits to shapes, it comes in handy because you don't have to keep switching off between the move, rotate, and scale. So I found that helpful. Another thing that I found helpful was the recolor tool. So now if you want to change a color, not only do you just change the color, but it'll show you what the material looks like. And I think that's a big advantage because I know sometimes, now if I hit recolor, I know sometimes you don't really know what to expect with some of how some of the colors interact with the materials. And it's just a really straightforward way to see everything. I do wish they would have more colors, but I'm sure they will come eventually. Now, if 
let's see if I go back to configure. So we went through that. Then you have your clone flip, which is the same as you had before. Manipulate. Yeah, if you want to stretch out your object. I'm pretty sure that transform. Yeah, tra transform also has the manipulate in it. So another handy tool. And then delete is to delete your object. So really, if you to bring out this menu and you bring out your shapes, I feel like that's the best case scenario because you don't have to keep looking at your hand while you're building. All right, so now if I want to go to my tubes and I hit create, the first thing you'll notice is under your settings, you, you could begin to adjust your tube settings. So how big you want your tube to be, then your tube height. So obviously the lower I go, the more flat it is, the larger I go, the more square it'll become. Uh, for this example, I'm using four facets, but I could change it up to 10. And this is your analog mode. So if you apply pressure to your maker pen, is it going to change? If I have it wants smooth tubes, if I want to connect tubes, and again, you have your position snap and rotation snap down here as well. Another thing I found useful was just having this undo over here and you could kind of go back a few versions and if you make a mistake or you decide to change your mind, it's just easy undo, redo. Let's see, you got your swatches. So I haven't really played around with this too much, but it looks like you could save a certain material and size profile. So right now, if I save the swatch I'm currently using, and I really enjoy using this yellow metal floor tread that it's just an easy way for me to keep going back to it. I know some people, if they're doing terrain, this could come in handy because you're using the same colors and textures over and over again. And you just have to click, 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 switch and uh, really simple. Then your props. So these are all your basic rec room props. And you also have circuits V1, which is now organized by the same categories. They just, you just have to scroll down. So you have math, other chips, other gadgets and so on. And you have your gizmos. For circuits V2, the menu is still a little bit confusing, but if you go to search and you hit circuits V2, you could use these different categories to find what you need. I, for example, if you want a math chip, you just hit the math and so on. So. So yeah, I mean, all in all, I, I find the menu super helpful. So we've gone through the tools and we've gone through the palette. If you do want to reset one of these screens that you've taken out, you just hit reset here, it'll bring it back to your menu. Also, I'm, I believe I mentioned it, but you could also adjust the size of these, these menus as well. Configure. I guess I should make an object to configure it. So do I want it to be environment, decoration? These are your different options. Do you want it grabbable, climbable, so on? Then if I move over to logging, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure what this is used for, but I'm assuming it has to do with circuits V2. I'll have to read up a little bit more to understand the logging tab. And then again, this room will just explain information about your room. And if you want to start or end the game, if you're building a game currently. So all in all, I enjoyed the new menu. It will take some getting used to, but 
I mean, I, I the fact that you could pull out these different tabs, especially because I, I've been using a lot more tubing lately. I think it will come in handy because I could keep switching between the tube facets and the tube height. And before I would have to click, click, look at my hand, switch. Now it's just right in front of me. Uh, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later this week.